is injections, but what we're really talking about is not injections, but administration of medication. And not just administration of medication, but this specific type. Like with everything else, ladies, you know I like to um, express the fact that words mean things, right? And this word must mean something also. So let's look at the uh, language and let's decipher it. Can anyone decipher it uh, first and foremost of all the people sitting here right now? Anybody? Anyone? 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 Yeah. Oh, go. Para. Enterally means inside, like put in. Entero, it's like... Yeah. No. But, uh, but you're on the right track. So we have hair or para, which means around. Yes, around. around. Entero would be the root over here, which means digestive system. Oh, and pertaining to. That's right. And this is pertaining to. So what does this mean? Pertaining to around the digestive system? Pertaining around? Yeah. No so, huh? Surrounding. The Surrounding the digestive Surrounding system. The so what does that mean? We can administer medications d differently, right? Uh, when you go home, if someone is sick, you give them something to drink, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would s that's directly into the digestive system, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. Now, how is it that if somebody has a toothache, no, that's too close to the mouth. What if somebody's butt hurts and you want to give them a Tylenol? How does a medication that goes into the mouth affect anything that happens in the rear end? Okay, so what you're telling me is, is that anything and everything that you eat, drink, swallow, or inhale will eventually end up in your uh, bloodstream? Am I correct? Yes. Do I have an agreement? Can I get an amen? Amen. Thank you. So, no matter what happens, anything and everything you do to yourself, Everything will ultimately end up in the bloodstream. So whether you eat it, drink it, rub it on your skin, stick it up your rear end, or put it into where the blood is, which is the vein, right? Will ultimately make its way into the blood. Are we clear about that? Yeah. Because if we remember our conversations and we talked a little bit about blood, blood is the ultimate delivery system. Right? So if we're applying something on the body, into the body, whatever means it is, it will end up in the bloodstream. And so, having said that, the parenteral administration of medications surrounds the digestive system. It's not anything we do at home. It is something we will do in the doctor's office or in the hospital. So something that surrounds the uh, enteral system, okay, or your digestive system, does not mean that it goes anywhere in the mouth or in the rear end. Uh, by the way, medications that go into the rear end, those of us that have kids that had fevers know that some of the suppositories, like aspirin and, uh, you know, well, maybe not aspirin, uh, whatever, stuff to reduce the fever, you don't give it to the baby to swallow, right? It goes as a suppository in the rear end. Works great. Much better than down the mouth. Suppository is the best. So, yes. suppository is, is, is best for everyone, mm -hmm. except we just don't like sticking things over there okay. for obvious reasons, <laughs> okay. all right? Nobody wants to go where the sun don't shine. So, <laughs> to make a long story short, parenteral administration is usually talked about when we talk about injections, and we have different types of injections, all right? We have four that we're going to be dealing with. Well, technically just three, but four if you consider the fact that we actually stick needles into somebody's veins, but we take things up. We, we uh, as medical assistants, you will not put any medication in anybody's veins, but you will give them shots into their muscles, you will give them shots into the fatty tissue, and you, you will give them shots into the skin. Okay, these are three different injections that we do in class, and they pertain to the parenteral administration of medication. So we have three different types of injections that we do. I am 
which stands for intramuscular. Handwriting is atrocious today. Subcutaneous, or SC. And ID, or intradermal. Let's look at these words. Well, intramuscular. Intra means into. Muscular pertaining to the muscle. So intramuscular injection is into the muscle, right? I don't really need to. Well, let's do it anyway. Intra, into, musculo, which is muscle. Right? That's my favorite picture, right? Suffix ar belonging to. Subcutaneous. Prefix sub, which means under, cutaneo, which means skin, and suffix us, which means belonging to. All right, so we got under, cutaneo, skin. Cutaneo is one of the words that means skin. We have derm, dermato, okay, all these things that also means uh, skin. By the way, cutaneo is the root that makes the word cuticle. You know those cuticles, little skin pieces that surround your nails? Mm -hmm. right, that's the, where the word cuticle comes from. And suffix us also means belonging to. All right? By the way, al, ar, us, all these suffixes mean belonging to. Again, intra, and then you got derm. So look, one is under the skin, and what's under the skin? Fat. So that's injection into the fatty tissue. And intradermal means into the skin. Very important difference. And the examples of an intradermal injection, or the primary in, in, uh, example for us, will be the MAN2 test. You guys know what a MAN2 is? M-A-N-T-O-U-X? Mm -hmm. How about this? PPD, anyone ever heard of that? Yeah. What is that? So what's PPD? Well, never mind that. I'm going to give you one more. How about this one? TB test. By the way, all of them are the same. So, MAN2 test, PPD test, and TB test, these are all the same thing. Professionally, they're either MAN2 or PPD. Okay, MAN2, name after the guy that came up with it, I assume, I'm not sure. PPD stands for, for purified protein derivative. Okay, I don't need you to know that for the exam. I'm just kind of throwing it out there. When you see the video on uh, YouTube, you can do it. Purified protein derivative. Okay, and TB, tuberculosis. Okay, we're looking for an allergic reaction or lack thereof if we inject a person with, uh, with an antigen for uh, tuberculosis. Okay, you're supposed to have a, uh, uh, an allergic reaction. Okay. Uh, actually, no. If you have an allergic reaction, that means you've been exposed. <laughs> if you don't have one, you haven't been, and you're immune. You have been exposed, or either you had the vaccine, right? That's right. So, all sorts of people that come from third world countries, <coughs> Albania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it. Russia. Morocco. Morocco, yeah. You, uh, you have all received... Actually, just about anywhere in the, in, in the world except Canada, Australia, um, maybe France, Great Britain, they all use the same vaccination. Uh, what the heck was it called? What was that vaccine called? It was called, it was called, it'll come to me, I don't remember. But it's, it's one of those vaccines that actually contains, you know, part of that purified protein that we react to. So they always send us that, oh, you got to get a chest x-ray. Okay, so, you know. That's what it is. Or you got to get shots, which is not the case. Just remember, oh, BCG, it's called BCG. We've all had vaccinations called BCG. And, you know, I'm having a senior moment. I can't remember what BCG stands for, but it'll come to me now and I'll remember. But everyone, just about everyone from anywhere outside of the United States, except countries like what I just listed, including Ireland, uh, they do not use BCG. Okay? We all do. We have BCG when we are babies. Exactly, yeah. but outside of the United States. They call it something else altogether. Okay, so this is what we have. So, you know what? That's what we're talking about. Now, the question is, why do we have 
three different types of